What will come in, that's absolutely sure, is an increase in the personal allowance. Now, very interestingly, this morning I heard the Chancellor saying if it was only the Conservatives, the personal allowance would be £12,500. So apparently the Conservatives have now been pulled back by the Liberal Democrats, who of course his policy was to bring the uh, personal allowance up to £10,000 in the first place. But anyway, it's just the way things are, I guess, with the election coming. And I'm not going to mention the election too many more times because I'm bored by it already. I don't know about you. Um, but there you go. That's the projected personal allowances going forward. The result of that is that the age-related personal allowances, which have been frozen for a long time, will become redundant in the year after the next one because the personal allowance will simply be larger than the age-rated allowance. So it simply becomes redundant. And in fact, for those born uh, pre-48 but not pre-38, it's effectively already redundant in the, in the next tax year. So um, a bit of tax simplification, no doubt, someone will claim. Um, we all know, because it's been that way for a while, I think 2011, um, sorry, not this, this completely different slide, I've changed my slide order. Um, what we have for the first time in the next year is we have a transfer of all personal allowance. Now, we've been here before. We used to have this. When we first started self-assessment um, and husband and wives could be taxed as individuals, there was such thing as a transferable personal allowance. But in those days, you were allowed to transfer it regardless of your tax rates. And the idea was to, if, if you had a spouse that didn't have any taxable income, it could be transferred to the person who had taxable income to try and ameliorate the effects of going from the position before where basically husbands and wives' incomes were added together um, and they were taxed almost as one, well, they were taxed as one person at one point, unless you made an election otherwise. Here, there is part of the personal allowance, £1,050, that can be transferred between spouses, but the person receiving it effectively can only be a basic rate taxpayer. So, Peter, <laughs> you scoff. <laughs> Well, exactly, exactly. It's not a great deal of use to a higher to the, probably the people in this room. But clearly, if you have a spouse that doesn't have any income, it's a way of transferring. I say spouse, I mean civil partner as well, and all the rest of it. Um, it's a, a way of transferring uh, an allowance worth just under two hundred pounds, I guess, um, or just around about two hundred pounds from one person to another. So I suppose it makes a small difference for some people. You have to do that by an election. You can do that on your tax return. We both have to make it. Or you can make a paper election, in which case it stays in place until such time as you revoke it. But of course, it only has effect if you are a basic rate taxpayer. Um, top rate tax, um, 45%. Now, of course, I suspect that depends on the shade of the government in 48 days' time. We have had in the recent past, we have had in the recent past tax rate changes during a tax year. If you remember, capital gains tax was reduced to 18% a few years back, and then they increased it part way through the tax year to 28%. I think that's more difficult with income tax, because at least with capital gains tax, there's the sort of almost like a tax point, there is a transaction and it will fall one side or other of the tax line. I can't see it very easy to change income tax midway through the year because there are a lot of people, self-employed people for example, whose income is in effect averaged over a year. If you're an employee, it's slightly different. There is almost a point, there is a point when you become liable to the tax when you're paid, when it's due. But for a self-employed person, that's far more difficult. So I think it's very difficult for no matter what the shade of government, for the rate to change during the next tax year. <coughs> I'm not saying it's impossible, because they can do it, and we'll all have to suffer the consequence, but I think it's very unlikely. So I think probably 45% top rate for next year. <coughs> Income tax bans. Um, well, there they are. There's a matter of fact. What's actually been happening um, is that we have this system now where once you have more than £150,000, you don't have a personal allowance, and that's what's described on the next screen. And what basically happens is you've got your 
um, personal allowance, then you've got a basic rate tax ban, then you've got the 40% tax ban, then above 150, you've got the 45% tax ban. And the 40% tax ban is just simply an arithmetical uh, difference between one and the other. And what's been happening is the personal allowance has been going up, but the rate at which you pay the 40% tax has not been going up. What the government has said is that they plan to put that up by inflation from now on. Of course, it depends on what the government's going to be. Um, but what's actually happened, as you will see, in the current year, it's, or rather next year, it's actually come down. The personal allowance has gone up, but the higher rate band has, has effectively um, reduced a bit. So, I mean, it's just an arithmetical thing. Um, and there we are. <coughs> So, as I said before, you have this issue about losing your personal allowance once you have £100,000 worth of income. Um, the 60% effective tax band, which is what it is, um, now applies between £100,000 and £121,600 being exactly twice the basic rate for the uh, personal allowance. Savings rate, this is not new, this came in last year. There is a band immediately sitting above the personal allowance for last year of 0% for savings. But that's not what the Chancellor announced yesterday. That is simply part of the picture I'm about to tell you. That came in last year. What we have now, in addition to that, is an exemption for investment income of up to a a thousand pounds for a basic rate taxpayer and 500 pounds for a higher rate taxpayer. None, none if you're in a 45% band. So we have this rather complicated position where potentially um, if you are a basic rate taxpayer with very low income you could have 2,000 pounds worth of um, investment income which wouldn't be taxed. If you're a, 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 a higher rate taxpayer, it's only ever going to be 500 because you lose that zero rate band as you go through, as your income goes up. The net effect of all this, when it comes in, um, and it hasn't come in yet, is that there will be no deduction of tax at source by banks on interest. Because the vast majority of tax deducted at source is for small amounts of money. If you have large amounts on deposit, there is no deduction at tax at source anyway. So basically for wealthy people with lots of money in the bank, they never really had much deduction on their current account or something, whatever it might be. But that's not what it was after. It was about simplifying the tax system so tax returns didn't have to be issued to everybody. And because of this change, there won't be any deduction at uh, tax at source. There will of course still be notional tax on dividends, which is the other part of this. And I don't think the government is going to start <coughs> repaying notional tax on dividends because that's never been repayable. It's only ever been a tax credit. It's never been repayable. So if instead of bank interest you have dividend income, which wasn't going to be taxed in the basic rate band anyway, actually, to be honest, it makes no odds. So I'm not quite sure why they're doing it, but um, that's the headline anyway.